Good morning. Welcome to Options Tender. It is Friday. Welcome everybody. October 4th, 2024. We're going to go through SPY on multiple time frames and then go around the horn on IWM, SMH, QQQ, and the VIX. Now, game plan has not changed. Uh, if you are new here, I'm going to go through all this for you and show you where I think our target is and how we're still right on target. I know it's choppy. This has been a mess, it's, but that's kind of what we knew uh, in a sense to where all of our tops are processes. And we've been, this is the 12th day since the breakout. And I'm gonna show you on the 65 uh, how this might look. There's two scenarios. There's one that's a little bit more bearish, but I don't think that's gonna happen. I think we're going uh, pretty much straight to the 580 mark on SPY. So which is about uh, 10 points away on SPY. All right. Uh, we're doing this intraday about 11.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're interested in getting these videos intraday, then consider becoming a supporter, a YouTube supporter. Uh, and that's on YouTube, not the Patreon. The Patreon is for uh, supporting this channel. Um, and uh, you still get, if you're a patron, you still get trade alerts and things like that. But let's jump into it. We have SPY on the monthly time frame. We have 2,000 top. 21 top, forming a top, and 2024, we have negative divergence. We're not showing that. We've showed on every video negative divergence on all time frames. The daily time frame, the 65, we're looking for another divergence after this correction was over. And I believe the bottom was in yesterday, and I'll show you the time relationship that was there. So, uh, again, we're forming a top, just kind of eking our way to new highs. I still think we'll make another new high, but uh, I suspect we'll have a nice big doji from this uh, monthly candle. We have plenty of time left for that. Let's go to the weekly. On the weekly time frame, you know, same thing. Um, I want to make sure I get this correction here. So uh, we're looking at a channel I suspect we'll test the bottom of this channel. It's not really a channel yet. We do have the top trend line that's valid, but uh, we only have one touch on the bottom here. Okay, so we're still above the 8 EMA. We're in a bullish posture, just like the uh, monthly time frame. Uh, we're also kind of just consolidating. Will we have a doji just like this here today? It's possible. That's, that's very possible. And then a follow through maybe um, next week, so with this grind. But so far, um, still in just this bullish posture. We don't have anything bearish about this other than we're getting to resistances and we've hit all of our targets and we have the negative divergence. So all those are signs that a reversal is imminent. So we have a target that we hit and we're above right now. Again, we're, we're bullish above this. so. After this correction here, we had our retracements, got past all the retracements, past the 100, which is the former all-time high, um, and hit our first major target at the 127 retracement. Backed off of it and then got above, went to the next, next target, 162, and that's the last target there. Now, it what tends to happen as you hit these targets, it's not the end all be all, but we're getting above it, right? So we're bullish above it. But on the lower time frames, we have other targets to hit. So that's what's happening now. And on you know, like the quarterly candle, this is this is most likely gonna end up a rejection with the with the wick. So the time frames are all super important. Um, you know, maybe we'll show that quarterly sometime. Uh, after the rejection, but uh, so far on the weekly time frame, holding above. So you, you can't really be bearish on this breakout. It's a breakout and a back test, holding that 8 EMA, the 162. Now, the time and price relationship, 1010. That's next week. So this is a cluster for next week. All right. It's not uh, on the day specifically. It could, could be on 1010. But so next week on this time frame is when we're looking for a reversal. So next week, let's go to the daily. On the daily time frame, we have this 
bearish rising wedge throw over very bearish broke down from it back tested and had a spectacular fall there um now pushing back for another back test rejected and doing basically the same thing again and right now we're uh, back above that eight ema after breaking down from it and holding on to it for the time being now what i want to point out in this time frame is is virtually just like this top here look how much time it takes or it's a process you know this one seemed like it took a little bit it had one two three four five six days and then finally a breakdown so that's you know just over a trading week on this one we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and we're on day 12 of this consolidation area this was the breakout on the um the cut the fed cut and so the next day you gapped up so that breakout is just a sideways consolidation and we're looking for this to hit our target up here somewhere in this time frame and this price around 580. now technically technically speaking we could break from that point since we have these trend lines that are going upward we could continue to go but i will be uh, layering into some more puts at this point uh, going up to this point especially after we uh, break these highs here and i'll be posting those trade alerts so you don't have to you don't have to ask i'll, I'll post exactly what i'm doing all of my trades are posted um, for the members and i had a lot of them i still have a lot of them uh holding on to now uh one person asked me uh, why i do not um show when i close out everybody has their trading style everybody has their risk tolerance that it's way too complicated to to simply uh show targets and 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 where you should take it you know time frames are different and so um i don't you know i close these out on my own um it depends on how many you have if you have 10 contracts maybe a scale out of a quarter of them you know maybe three and then let more ride and then three in the next target and you know there's so many different ways you could do this so all right so i want to show kind of the structure that we've been looking at for a long time that's the rising wedge here um, we have a ending diagonal abc for one abc for two abc for three abc for four and we're doing an a b c for five so all these are zigzags right so we have a five three five that we're looking for so keep that in mind when we go down to the 65 and i'll show you why i think this is almost complete here all right there's our target that we we're talking about we're above it and holding it so it not not too much bearish to look at <clears throat> okay so like this top this is mimicking this top here so far all right we had our top we had some deep retracements and then an, it looks like an abc correction there and we got to our uh minimal target the 127 that's what i'm looking for this time as well so where do we get these targets from now on the high time frame we satisfied that target with these two tops here right so but on the lower time frame we still have some things to accomplish and this correction just like on the higher time frame has a retracement uh, aspect to it too and we got past the regular retracements uh, uh, over the hundred percent and we held on to that the last two days and so that's why we had to gap up today yes it was a catalyst but i don't i don't care if it beat uh, or or not you know the jobs i don't look at those numbers that's not it's not my job to do uh, no pun intended but we held the level we held that former all-time high in this breakout so uh right now it looks like we're kind of um, crashing back down, but we're just in this consolidation area. So I suspect nothing will happen uh, today and we get that doji on the weekly candle and then we can uh, break up above after that, but still holding the eight EMA. And now we're getting to that cluster. So we had one that's here today and the, and the four, I'm gonna take that one off. 
and then the rest start next week. So, you know, we're just being super careful. We're, we're uh, lining up into puts, and on one of these days next week, I, you know, turnaround Tuesday would be a very pretty situation where we get some follow through on Monday. But with nothing happening today, if we don't get anything today, then I suspect that uh, we won't get our reversal until, you know, Wednesday, Thursday kind of thing. It may be a very bearish state on Friday and Monday to continue. So we'll see. Um, so we're getting to the danger zone. Time and price is happening. Now let's go to 65. On the 65 minute, we have another bearish rising wedge that we're filling out and we have our targets up above and now what happened today is simply uh, so I'll show you two scenarios I think we just broke out from this consolidation from this kind of wedge look here and we're back testing that's what I think and this is looking we have a low here and this is looking like an ABC. So that's what's gonna confuse everybody. All right, if you have an ABC here, that's corrective, right? So there could be one more low to test the bottom of this trend. That's a possibility, but I think it's more likely that this is an ABC for an ending diagonal for wave one. Then we see an ABC, a zigzag for wave three. And we're putting in the end of wave two right now three and some sort of four that will waste maybe a day or two and a five to complete our our mission here okay and then we break down so that's the confusing part of ending diagonals and and this whole trip has been an ending diagonal on the higher time frame so that's why it, it looks so odd and so this is our a which is a five wave move we got our b and now we're looking for a five wave move up. So in a traditional sense, we're just filling out a wedge. On the Elliott wave and Fibonacci, we have A and ABC for B. And we're looking at one, two, wave three. We have a flat pattern for four. And then an ending diagonal for a grind up for wave five and we should get some pops on uh, some of those beaten up stocks we have uh, snow that's moving today should see a few of them start to move uh, they they haven't worked out very well we did well in Lulu and then it um, on our uh, we rolled up some positions and those just you know crumbled um, but we'll see Lulu's moving again okay so um, that's what it'll look like we have our bottom in here so get rid of this here and also this move here from the bottom of wave two to the top of wave three we held on to the 23 percent retracement and that's very valid for wave four um, the 382 if price should break down more the 382 will come into play. I'm not even going to put that up yet. I don't think that's going to happen, but it's just below. And that would be testing the bottom of that. So the, it's still possible. It could go down there. It's very valid. I just think things are going to hold on. They're very confusing. It's much better to confuse everybody with the three-wave move. And then we go higher. And people short the heck out of this. Okay. So then we're going to have a little squeeze. So let's go around the horn now. QQQ. QQQ had a bull flag breakout back test same thing so I think this is going to hold up and we get to our next target which is closing the gap 496 go to here so everything's valid already so it doesn't have to do any of this we had our A B C correction that could be over but we're looking at this wave C not being done yet. We have a one, two, three, wave four. And again, ending diagonal. An ABC look here for a one. 
we got two in right now and we're looking for three four and five just to eke out a new high here uh unfinished business at the 887 for this completion of wave two so this was all impulse wave one into two and then the devastating wave three starts IWM. So we don't have that much more to go on the Qs and SPY. So, you know, I'm not sure where this is going to go at this point. Do we just come up to the gap again and just, uh, you know, is this some sort of, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to even try to count this. This is the same thing. This is a wave four and we just go, you got a wave five. Or do we continue? Does this start to jam to the upside? Just rock it up. I, I don't see that. I think that's getting less likely. We're running out of time. But we'll see. It started to look like it earlier today because, uh, you know, relative strength in this move. But the um, IWM, the small caps, have a long way to go if we're going to play out some um, this scenario here. So I redrew this as wave five ending here. This is looking more likely that wave three was here. We had wave four and just an ending, ending diagonal for wave five. We have an impulse wave here. And much like the Qs, you have an A, B, and maybe we eke out a new high here for uh, to test the 786 again for a C. Maybe now the other, if much more bearish scenario on uh, small caps is, is is the one two one two, and we don't make it any higher, and the cues just drag us up while this starts to fade more. Sorry about that. SMH, same scenario as IWM. We'll see how strong this can hold up. Do we make a new high? It doesn't have to. Can we go test the uh, gap? Maybe. I, I, I just don't know at this point who's going to lead SPY to get to its target and the Qs to get to its target. Um, Tesla, if Tesla's super weak and starts to break down, then we're going to need NVIDIA and the small caps to, to keep, or uh, the um, semiconductor conductors to, to pull us up to get to those targets while the queues kind of weighed, weighed down by uh, large cap stocks. So there's different ways it can happen. So it's two in here could be, it's satisfied. We get this 62% uh, retracement, A, B, and then a higher high here for a C. And the other possibility is if there's some strength ending. So I'm not, I'm not shorting these yet. I'll short these when I see that SPY is near its targets and Qs are near its target, then I know that there's not much left for the others to, to move up. VIX. And the VIX here, um, again, rejecting off of this, we're calling this an inverse head and shoulder. And I think um, we might get a rejection here to, not, to make a higher low, not necessarily to make new lows or anything, but allow the market to um, move to the upside. So ultimately, I think this is going to break for an inverse head and shoulder. I think this is going to be a massive move to the upside. Uh, while engulfing this 55 move, I think we'll be in the hundreds. Okay, so that's what I got for you. Um, I'll take a peek at snow since I mentioned it. Just a little sneak peek. This move has been very elusive. Okay, we've been in this range. And for all you members that uh, seen that video, this appears to be a leading expanding diagonal. Okay. And now we're getting an A, B, C for wave two. So we have a one or an A, a two or a B, and we're starting to get to move. We're not, it looks like we're not going to break out from this uh, falling channel today, but uh, here's a free, um, trade for you if you're looking for something to happen this could come back for another maybe this is um a larger a b or wave um two here but this could come back for another move down for a one two and then 
should be pretty pretty big move here uh probably even to close the gap you have a large falling wedge here that i think is going to start to move so that all could happen in just a couple days um and then pull back sharply when the market starts to go down and then as the market uh, goes up we should see some relative strength in snow again so um, these will be some good plays in the future to hold on to when you think the market is going to bounce uh, and there should be good good tradable bounces um, when the market um, starts to crash really so that's what i got for you have a wonderful weekend and we'll if we have more information we'll do another video tomorrow all right